guys, I'm Charles Bryant and welcome to my channel. If you're new to this channel, this channel is really dedicated to photography where I teach you tips and tricks. We go over some film work, drone work, and maybe even a review here and there. So if this channel interests you enough to subscribe, please do so and hit the bell. And now we're gonna move on to the topic for today. First, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Get pumped because this is gonna be fun. We're gonna edit time lapses in After Effects, and I'm gonna show you how to take your digital raw image stills and create a fantastic, intriguing sequence. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. Now, I'm assuming that most of you have heard of a time lapse. You maybe even have tried to create one using a mobile device or an action camera because most of those devices today have kind of a push and play type preset that will allow even a novice person to create pretty outstanding time lapse. I mean, these devices can create some pretty awesome stuff. However, the way I'm gonna show you today using raw image stills from a DSLR camera and then throwing them into After Effects will give you just more control to create more dynamic sequences. So you see, time lapses are basically another way that a photographer has to tell a story in a more dynamic way. As, as photographers, now we try to tell a story or create a mood in one still image, and sometimes that's really hard to do. In feature films or in cinematography, you're creating that story or that mood over a multitude of images and sequences, dynamic angles, movements, and that is why they call that motion pictures. So enough talking, let's go ahead and jump into After Effects, but first, we're gonna offload those images down to your computer or maybe an external hard drive because I don't want to run the risk of accidentally deleting them off my memory card and wasting two hours worth of shooting. It stinks, trust me, I've done it before. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and take your memory card and insert that into your computer. Let it load up. And once that's done, go ahead and make a new folder. And for the sake of being easy, I'm gonna just label this one time lapse. All right, now open up that folder, click on your memory card folder, and then go ahead and find those files, select them all, and drag them into the new folder that you just created on your desktop, and wait. Okay, so once that is finished, go ahead and pat yourself on the back if you've gotten this far, because you've gotten a quarter of the way finished through this whole charade. Yay! All right, so cool. All right, let's close out of this. So if you're wondering why in the world we had to put them on the desktop first, basically that is for redundancy. And I do that because I don't like working off of the memory card simply for the fact that if it becomes corrupt for some reason, then I've lost all of that information, all of that work, and all of the time, and I don't wanna to have to go back and reshoot. So I made a folder here called Time Lapse to make it simple. I downloaded all that to that folder on my desktop. If you don't want to put that all on your computer, that's perfectly fine. You can put it on a hard drive like this right here. This is an external hard drive, and that will save your computer from getting cluttered with a lot of information and killing all of your hard drive space. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and bomb on into After Effects. Now, if you're new to After Effects, don't get scared. Don't freak out. It's, um, it's, it's, it's not that crazy. It's not uh, a rocket science. Um, there are a lot of hard things you can do in After Effects, but this is relatively simple. So just follow along. I'm gonna go slow and you'll, you'll be happy. You'll be proud of yourself. All right, first thing you're gonna do is go into this box right here. You're gonna right click on that box basically. And instead of going import recent footage, you're gonna to go to import. You, want, you don't wanna do multiple files because you know honestly that makes sense because we have 331 of them. You're just gonna to go to file and then it may automatically pop up, which it did, fantastic. Sometimes it does not, then you have to go in here and try to find it. Um, but it went to my time-lapse folder, which is awesome. Now, the next thing that you're gonna probably want to do is select all of these images. Do not do that. That will be the ultimate mess and probably crash your computer. I'm just kidding, I don't know what it'll do, but it will be a mess. Click on only one, then make sure you're in create composition and that you've ticked camera raw sequence that's it that's all you have to do and hit open and watch the magic ha <laughs> look at that adobe camera raw how about that so instead of having to go into an editing program and edit these photos we're going to be able to do it right now in adobe camera raw and if you've saved presets from like lightroom or maybe photoshop those presets should be in adobe camera raw or if you wanna go and do it all on your own, you can go to each one of these tabs, 
take on one of these tabs and go through all those settings and adjust it the way you want to. Now, I shot this a little, I, I, honestly, it's a little overexposed um, in my opinion, but you know, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through my presets and I have already previously chose one that I like, which was Cherry Grove Pier. Now, as you can tell, when I click on this, it, it is blown out more because uh, my histogram right here is showing that all the highlights are really peeking up to the top. If you're not real sure what a histogram is, um, I'll leave a link to the video in the description. Um, that is another video that I'd explain how to read a histogram. It's a very useful tool. So in order to combat that mess, we're gonna go back through and kind of make some small adjustments. So I'm gonna start here and just kind of dabble down a little bit with my exposure until some of this starts to go down and not on this side. This is your highlight side and this is your shadows side. We don't want any of that peeking out too much. So I'm gonna draw this down just a little bit. And bear with me as I make these adjustments. I'll try to move as quick as I can. Taggle down a little bit of that. I'm gonna draw my contrast down and I'm gonna to talk to myself so you can laugh all you want to, but this is how I think. Uh, texture, no. Draw that down a little bit. Clarity, I think that's pretty good. Details, maybe a little bit more. Vibrance, saturation, those are all good. Uh, my tonal curve is what I like. Sharpening, perfect. Luminance, don't really need any of that. Or nose, re uh, <laughs> luminance, I don't really need any of noise reduction because it was shot during the day. Um, I'm gonna take all that out. HSL adjustments, hue, saturation, luminance. I love all the way that is. That was designed that way for a purpose. It gives kind of a teal orange, sort of. Split toning, not gonna mess with that either. Lens corrections, now this may change some things. So if I enable profile corrections, that's gonna choose the correct prof, prof that's gonna choose the correct profile from my camera. And it did, uh, changed it a little bit of the warping and then it actually lightened it up a little bit. So I'm gonna draw the exposure down just a little bit more. Not too much, but just a little bit more. Let's see what we've got here. Overall, I think that looks good for me. I don't really think I need to change anything else. I like that. Let me scroll back through these one more time. Effects. So I'm not gonna really add any post-crop vignetting or just vignetting. It gets overused a lot, really, in my opinion. So I think I'm done, because I like everything that's going on right here. The colors, the, the, you know, the tonal maps, I love all that stuff, it looks good to me. Uh, histogram looks pretty okay for me, for, for what it is, you know. Um, hit okay. Once you're done, go ahead and hit okay. And then that's it, that's all you've got. I normally check this right here. This is um, really kind of creates a motion blur to some things, or in this case, it's gonna make it kind of smooth out a little bit more. And if you can tell, my shutter speed was really slow in this shot, and I did that on purpose. And in my next video, I'm gonna show you how I did that during broad daylight. Like, I think this was shot around 12 o'clock, so it's high noon the worst possible lighting conditions ever, but I wanted to get this shot the way this was for this particular reason. Uh, and I think I'm done. So let's go ahead and export. So in order to do that, what you'll do is you'll go up to File right here. Click on File, and then go to Export. You can go to Adobe Media Encoder if you want to. I, I just go ahead and do Add to Render Queue. And then you're gonna get this little uh, dialog box down here You'll have some settings that you can change. There's really no need to doing that because it's the way it's supposed to be. But I will change the output because I want to rename it and I'm going to make sure I output it to where I can find it. So I'm going to click on this right here and I want it to go to my desktop. That way it'd be easy to find when we're done. But I am going to label it just time lapse, if I can spell it correctly. <laughs> I'm on the gun here. Uh, time lapse video. Oops, look at that, I can't spell. I'm the worst speller. All right, time-lapse video. We'll save it as a QuickTime movie format uh, and go ahead and hit save. We're good there. Next thing you do is go all the way over here to this right side and click render. And now this part, depending on your computer, may take you an hour, may take you 30 minutes, may take you five minutes. Let's see how long it's gonna take my computer. 
If it's gonna take a long time, I'll fast forward it. So click render and nothing's happening. I'm just kidding, it's, it's just really slow. So uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and fast forward this video so that I don't bore you to death. And that's it, we're done. See how easy that was? Now let's go ahead and take a look at our final product. Yes, that's it, I love it, I love it. It looks so cool. I love the way the cars look like they're in slow motion and almost have like a motion blur about them. It kind of gives it more of a, of a, I guess you'd call it a buttery smooth appeal. And you're probably wondering, how in the world do you do that? How, how did you get that in broad daylight? Well, I hate to trigger you and I'm gonna leave you on a cliffhanger, but that's gonna be in the next video. Well, that's a wrap guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that it has helped you in some way, maybe even inspires you to go out and shoot a time lapse. I say get out there and shoot one. And if you want to, tag me in it on Instagram at I'm Charles Bryant. I'd like to see your work. So I hope to see you next week and I will see you when I come back.